we have sad news in the world of, of, of reggae music. Um, singer Johnny Nash has died. Um, he only had, like, one hit song. And, um, he was known for his song, um, I Can See Clearly Now. And the song goes, I can see clearly now the rain is gone. Something like that. Um, he was an American reggae and pop music singer best known for that song, which was released in 72. He was one of the first non-Jamaican singers to record reggae music in Kingston, Jamaica. He was known for his basically style of music was reggae and traditional pop music. Started singing around the 50s and then sang up until his death this year. He was born and raised in Houston, Texas. Um, and Nash um, sang in the choir at Progressive New Hope Baptist Church in South Central Houston as a child, beginning in 1953. Nash sang cover songs of R&B hits on matinee and local variety show on KPRC-TV. In 1956, Nash sang on Arthur Godfrey's radio and TV shows for a seven-year period. Um, so he signed with um, ABC Paramount back in 1957 with the, with the single A Teenager Sings the Blues, which was his first song ever released. Nash had his first had his first hit chart hit in early 1958 with the cover of Doris Day's A Very Special Love. Um, marketed as a rival to Johnny Mathis, he also enjoyed success as an actor early in his career, appearing in the screen version of playwright Louis C. Peterson's Take a Giant Step in 1959. Nash won a Silver Sale Award for his performance. From the Locarno um, um, International Film Festival, Nash continued releasing singles in a variety of labels such as Groove, Chess, Argo, and Warner Brothers. In 1964, Nash and manager Danny Sims formed the Joda Records in New York. Joda released a Cow Sills single, All I Really Want to Be Is Me. Although Joda fell for bankruptcy after only two years, Nash and Sims moved on to marketing American singers to Jamaica owing to the low cost of recording in that country. In 1965, Nash hit a top five hit in the U.S. Billboard R&B chart that battled Let's Move and Groove Together that same year. He and Sims moved to Jamaica, and, and, um, and their lawyer, Newton Willoughby, was the father of Jamaican radio host Neville Willoughby. After selling off his old entertainment assets in New York, Sims opened a new music publishing business in Jamaica called Cayman Music. Nash planned to try breaking the local um, rock steady sound in the United States. Around 1966 or 67, Neville Willoughby took Nash to, Rastafari, to a Rastafarian party where Bob Marley and the Wailing Wailers were performing. Members Bob Marley, Buddy Wailer, Peter Tosh, and Rita Marley introduced Nash to the local music scene. Nash signed all four to an exclusive publishing contract with Cayman Music for just only $50 a week. In 1967, Nash, Arthur Jenkins, and Sims collaborated to create a new record called a new record label called JAD Records, named after the first um, the first names Johnny, Arthur, and Danny, and recorded their albums uh, at Federal Records in Kingston. J.A.D. released Nash's rock steady single Hold Me Tight in 1968 became a top five hit in both the U.S. and U.K. in 1961. Nash scored another U.K. hit with his cover of Marley's Stir It Up. Nash's 1972 reggae single, um, reggae influence um, single I Can See Clearly Now, had sold over one million copies and was awarded a gold disc by the R.I. R.I.A.A. in November of 1972. I Can See Clearly Now reached number one on the Billboard Hot 100 on November 4th, 1972, and it remained atop the chart for four weeks and also spent the same four weeks atop the adult contemporary chart. The I Can See Clearly Now album includes four original Marley compositions published by J.A.D. Guava, Guava Jelly, Comma Comma, You Poor Trigger Emmy, and the follow up and the follow up hit Stir It Up. There are more questions than answers. Was a third hit single taken from the album. Nash also was an act, was also active as a composer in the Swedish romance Vil Sagarna Tro in 1971, in which he portrayed a character named Robert. Um, the film soundtrack, partly instrumental reggae with strings, was composed by Bob, by, by Bob Marley and arranged by Fred Jordan. J.A.D. Records was ceased to exist in 1971, but it was revived in 1997 by an American Marley specialist, Roger Steffens, and French musician and producer, Bruno Bloom, um, for the complete Bob Marley and the Wailers 1967-72 10 album series, for which several of the Nash produced Marley and Tosh tracks were mixed or, re or, re or they were either mixed or remixed by Bloom for release. In the U.K., his biggest hit was with the song Tears on My Pillow, which, re which reached number one in the U.K. singles charts in July of 1975 for a week. After a cover of Sam Cooke's Wonderful World in 1976 and Let's Go Dancing in 1979, for many years, Nash seemed to have dropped out of sight with the exception of a brief resurgence in the mid-1980s with an album called Here Again, which was released in 86. 
it was preceded, which was preceded by the minor UK hit Rock Me Baby. Younger audiences were introduced to Nash's music with the with the appearance of Jimmy Cliff's cover of I Can See Curly Now and the nineteen ninety and the Disney's nineteen ninety three hit film Cool Runnings. In May of two thousand six, Nash was signing was singing again, sorry, at Sugar Hill Recording Studios and at Tier and Tierra Studios in his native Houston. Working with Sugar Hill Chief Engineer Andy Bradley and Tierra and Tierra Studios Grammy winning Randy Miller, he began the work of trans transferring analog tapes of his songs from the nineteen seventies and eighties to a Pro Tools digital format. Um on June twenty fifth of twenty nineteen, the New York um New York Times magazine listed Johnny Nash among hundreds of artists whose material whose material was reportedly destroyed in the chosen eight Universal Fire. Um, Johnny Nash has four acting credits going between film and, and television. In nineteen fifty nine, he um he had the lead role as a, as a, as the character Spencer Scott in Take a Giant Step, directed by Phil Blackock. One of the first black family films written by a black writer in 1960, he appeared um, as the character Apple alongside Dennis Hopper in the crime drama film Key Witness. In, 1950, in 1971, he played Robert in the Swedish romance film Bill Sagarno Tro. And there is no cause of death yet for him, so, but he was only, but it says he was 80 years old. So if you like the video, Give the video a like and subscribe to my channel, Random Mike, and also hit the notification bell so that you'll be notified when a new video comes out. And thanks for listening.